Elon Musk says Bill Gates could still be sure in Tesla. We have a jam-packed video for all you Tesla stock investors that need to know this information, including some clips from CNBC that I find very strange yet encouraging. The vast unknowledge that Wall Street has on Tesla is quite prevalent in this clip. And that should make you very bullish. We're going to talk about what the heck just happened to Oracle after they reported earnings down almost 10% at the time of recording this video. This is bad news for the AI investment theme of 2024. Tesla's stock just broke a critical resistance level, a long time technical level. This could send short scrambling and Tesla's stock much higher. When could this happen and what do you need to know? As well as that, we have a lot of other things to cover. But let's not make this intro 10 minutes long. Let's just get into it. If you like to make more money, well, that should be everyone. If you want to make more money and you want to grow your net worth as quickly as possible, well, staying up to date with this information could help you quite immensely. Getting the information first, comprehending the information on a degree in which you will not find on Wall Street, which we do here in these videos, is a great way to start. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. If you want to take it a step further, you want to come trade with us live in real time every time I make trades or anyone else in the group, or just come get involved in the conversation, link down below in the description of this video. So let's start this video with what Elon Musk just said about Bill Gates claims that Musk was super mean to him. Following a $1.5 billion short position that Bill Gates had on Tesla stock. Elon Musk just wrote, I mean, this just came out at 5.12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is 5.28 p.m. at the time of recording this video. Just so you guys kind of know, you're getting this information as soon as possible. Just so that the public understands, writes Elon Musk, taking out a short position against Tesla, as Gates did, results in the highest return only if a company goes bankrupt. Gates placed a massive bet on Tesla dying when our company was at one of its weakest moments several years ago. Such a big short position also drives the stock down for everyday investors. To the best of my knowledge, Gates still, and Elon really highlights this here, still has the massive bet against Tesla on the table. Someone should ask him, if he does, the lack of self-awareness and hypocrisy of Gates, who had the nerve to ask me to donate to its mostly window dressing environmental causes while simultaneously aiming to make 500 million from Tesla's demise boggles the mind. There currently is close to $20 billion worth of short positions on Tesla, and this core number does not tend to move that much. The value tends to go up and down as Tesla stock goes higher or lower. But you don't really see shorts covering ever on short positions. Tesla's short interest usually is in the range of three to three and a half percent. For context here, Apple's short interest is usually half of one percent or lower. So in context there to other big tech names, Tesla is significantly short all the time. Maybe Gates does still have a short position on Tesla. I think we will get answers to this relatively soon. But hey, let me know what you think down below in the comment section. If Gates has been short in Tesla this whole time, it's been a pretty rough ride. Considering Tesla's stock is up 129% year to date. We will get into the prospects of a short squeeze a little bit later on in this video. And you definitely need to hear it because it's one of those things where by the end of this week, you're going to have a much better understanding of where Tesla's stock could go. So I'm very excited to bring you all of that information. Before we get into it though, I just want to really highlight how long this Morgan Stanley upgrade and research note could take to fully get grasp in people's minds. This is not an easy concept to understand. And this next clip that we're going to go through together and provide analysis and commentary on really highlights how clueless Wall Street is 
to Tesla. And this could mean it, it might take a little while. It might take a couple of days or even a couple of weeks for Wall Street to fully understand. And this could mean some share price appreciation to Tesla stock as more people start to catch on. So this clip is from CNBC. It's titled Morgan Stanley says Tesla can reach $400 per share. Back to halftime, let's get to our call of the day. Morgan Stanley's Adam Jonas upgrading Tesla to outperform and raising his price target to $400. That's about 60% upside. From here, Jonas saying Tesla's supercomputer project Dojo could have a $500 billion enterprise value. Um, so $400, Joe, that's just where Tesla hit their highs a couple years ago. But, you know, we've, we've heard... Say Tesla to the moon. Say Tesla to the moon. Is Bill Gates short in Tesla? He's short. Yeah. yeah. I've heard kind of the the up and coming aspects, the the new market aspects of this Dojo computer for quite some time. Do you think that something's changed now that would indicate that there's a, an additional $500 billion baked into this opportunity. Well, Adam is the one that's, that's suggesting the potential here. And some other words that he uses within the note is he talks about this potentially being a $10 trillion marketplace and that Tesla maintains an asymmetric advantage in that marketplace. Now, you hear those words, that's pretty compelling in terms of believing that Tesla can continue uh, its upward trajectory that it's had so far year to date and eventually hit that $400 uh, price target that he has. Um, I, again, my ownership of... These are 12-month price targets. Keep that in mind. The official price target Morgan Stanley put on was $400. The bull case was 550 The worst case scenario, we're talking a deep recession, a almost, uh, you know, a worst case scenario than the great financial crisis around 120 a share that's if everything went wrong at tesla so keep that in mind of, of tesla is is equal weighted in its nature this is a stock that for you as a, a viewer you have to understand it's exhibited a lot of volatility over the last 12 months and i think you have to size the position accordingly to accept that volatility um, you're always assuming risk in the marketplace. It's how do you manage the risk? How do you shape the risk? And I think a lot of the problem that investors have in their ownership of Tesla is they get somewhat tempted and intoxicated by the extreme price movement, in particular to the upside, and they, they extend too much leverage towards the position. And that leads you to be somewhat susceptible to the extreme volatility that this stock has. So the, the fundamental um, aspect of what Adam Jonas is talking about here in the long term, it's something that we've heard in terms of autonomous driving and self-driving taxis. We've heard about that. We heard years ago that they were going to offer something that was going to be competitive to Uber and Lyft. We don't see that in the reality of today. So the strong fundamental argument is there. I just think it falls back to more about how do you want to position to that fundamental argument, understanding that you can't, the fundament, the strength of the fundamentals can't diminish the volatility that this stock seems to always constantly exhibit. That volatility is going to be there. And to me, that's the most important aspect if you're going to own this stock. It's a total address of market story, right? I mean, yes. if, if they can get to 10 trillion, that really is very compelling. That being said, the stock's up was up 110% before today, it's now up 120, trades at 80 times forward. And so I think the question is, is it an auto company or a tech company? He's now pivoted towards this being more of a, a tech company, We've heard clearly. heard that in the past though, right? Right, no, absolutely. But this is a company that gross margins are going down, right? I mean, that that's kind of... Kind of this is the first thing that really sparked my attention. Gross margins going down, she just said. They don't even realize the refreshed Model 3 the prices just went up 12% in China. The Model 3 accounts for about 29% of Tesla's total volume deliveries on any given quarter. That means margins just went higher, not lower. Tesla cut the price of FSD. Presumably, that will increase the take rate. Margins just went higher on full self-driving as well or the net margin, right? The, the net to the bottom line just got better due to the price cuts on FSD. But also the Model S and X. Some of the data we're getting from Google search trend data 
as well as some of the wait times here in the US for the Model S and the Model X have just increased a month to three months, depending on the model specific make or, or what custom designs you are having done to it. These are all good signs that demand just picked up for Tesla's higher end products. Hmm. Okay. I mean, that, that's kind of troubling. Talk about lack of pricing power, right? They've been lowering prices. So to me... Tesla has been lowering prices, but the news that we just got today says that Tesla might just discontinue the lowest end model of the Model Y, which is the rear wheel drive, and actually raise the prices of the Model Y in between $1,095 and as high as $1,370. That news just came out today. And it looks like if CNBC is not picking up on this, most of the markets, I would argue, are not picking up on this as well. At least the actual implications to margins. Hey, if you're gonna pay up for this, you have to really buy in to the, the autonomous angle and the technology aspect of this company. I, I don't... I don't and I also want to point out that Tesla, with its growth rates, where they are in, you know, the 50% range, Tesla's actually cheaper than Microsoft, it's cheaper than Apple, it's cheaper than Google. Tesla and Amazon have about the same valuation. Tesla's way cheaper than NVIDIA, way cheaper than a lot of your other stocks out there, factoring in the growth also known as the peg ratio. I, I find article not articles, but videos like this very bullish when people just don't even understand what's going on with Tesla. That means it could take some time for Wall Street to figure out what's actually happening right now with Tesla and what's going to impact Tesla next quarter and the quarter after that. But when they do, that could mean a lot more upside for Tesla stock. I don't think this can be a tech company without the auto company. I mean, the first line from Mr. Jonas's report is investors have long debated whether Tesla is an auto company or a tech company. Now, today it's being valued as a tech company. Last week it was being valued as an auto company because what you're talking about with gross margins. Here's the thing. I don't think you can get that total addressable market. I could be wrong on this without the auto business doing well so that you've got a customer base upon which to use that AI and get the data that you want. Now, here's where this becomes a problem. Competition has been creeping up, right? And, you know, we, last week we heard that the German auto manufacturers at whatever that auto show was, I think it was in Europe, but I forget, you know, that they're really coming on strong. We've got a lot of U.S. manufacturers. This isn't the EV market that it was 10 years ago. So that competition that could eat into their automotive business can also eat into the technology business. Mm, but maybe the... What? <laughs> what did we just hear? Okay. Tesla? Yeah, it's, it's a lot different than it was 10 years ago. The EV business is a lot different than it was 10 years ago. It's a lot better, okay? Today, EVs, um, a lot better than what they were 10 years ago. But I think more specifically what he's saying is competition is greater today. And in fact, that sure is true on a kind of nominal basis, right? There's more models out there. There's more companies producing EVs. But Tesla has actually gained market share over the past several years. The competition cannot produce a profitable electric vehicle. And they will not be able to for many, 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 many years. Now, one of the next things he said that really stands out to me is that if Tesla can see competition in the auto business... Well, it could see competition in the software business. This whole note was about Dojo, GM, Ford, Stellantis, any other legacy automaker out there does not have a supercomputer like Dojo, does not have full self-driving technology like Dojo. They're five or ten years behind. This has been long in the works for Tesla. <laughs> the, the lack of education surrounding Tesla's business and Tesla's business model into the future is quite remarkable. I didn't understand that, you know, Jim Labenthal and some of these other hosts on CNBC and really other analysts out there were this clueless on Tesla. But when you hear it, hopefully it makes you bullish.
And not just a little bullish, but very bullish. By the time these guys know what we're talking about in these videos, Tesla stock could be 350, 400 plus dollars per share. Then imagine the upside from there once Wall Street really figures it out. Tesla stock in the after hours is down over half of 1%, presumably because Oracle's dumpster fire earnings. Oracle is in fact down over 9% currently in after hours, dragging down Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, literally all of your big tech names, and specifically your AI slash large tech names. Now what actually happened? And is this something to be concerned with? Could this put a damper on the markets? Well, Oracle actually did not report a terrible quarter after all. Oracle comes up short on revenue, but touts AI cloud contracts. So the EPS was $1.19 per share adjusted versus $1.15 per share as expected by analysts. Revenue came in at $12.45 billion versus $12.47 billion as expected by analysts. Let me tell you right now, if you're in AI, if you're in cloud, if you're in big tech, you cannot miss on any numbers. And even if you do exceed the numbers, that's usually not enough. The guidance for Oracle was not as great. With respect to guidance, Oracle called for adjusted net income of $1.30 to $1.34 per share and a 5 to 7% revenue growth in the fiscal second quarter. For a stock trading close to all-time highs, well, was at all-time highs before this earnings, 5 to 7% revenue growth is not enough to justify a 40 PE ratio. This means that Tesla, just as a comparison, is what five ten times cheaper factoring in tesla's growth tesla's growing at what six times this number and is trading at double the valuation so it's i mean if you look at other big tech names tesla's on the cheap side let's call it that now, Oracle's revenue grew 9% year-over-year in the fiscal first quarter, which ended August 31st, according to a statement. Net income increased to $2.42 billion, or $0.86 cents a share, compared with $1.55 billion, or $0.56 cents per share, in the year-ago quarter. Just overall, not terrible, but not enough to support the valuations that we're seeing this could be a short-term problem for the markets and as i already noted stocks and after hours are mostly down following oracle's earnings and basically this last kind of five percent drop that we've seen in oracle coincides with basically what you've seen on other big tech names as well uh especially if you look at something like a tesla they basically sold off at the same time so I think this could have a negative effect on stocks coming tomorrow, but by the end of the day tomorrow, heading into Wednesday, the main focus will be the economic data. Now, if the economic data does not crater the markets on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I think Tesla stock could go through a much larger rally. You could call it a short squeeze. You could call it just a blow off top kind of of price action move whatever terminology you want to you want to use is fine with me but that's what i would be expecting as long as we make it through this week with no major disruptions we have went over this chart from carson investment research a couple of times in different videos this is going over the month of september and what tends to happen to the s p 500 data which tracked september and the s p through 1950 until 2021 so 71 years worth of data and it's pretty clear you actually tend to get a pretty bullish week this week and coincidentally enough the 13th which is wednesday when we get cpi you actually tend to rally after that and that's what i do expect as well but thursday's retail sales number will be very important because if retail sales come in bad, your GDP expectations are not going to fare well. And the markets 
largely are close to all-time highs because investors are not expecting a recession. A recession is not priced into this market. The GDP expectation is around 2.4% for Q3. If retail sales come in bad, your estimates could totally change for GDP. After all, this is the second month of Q3. So the first month, July, we had really good retail sales numbers. Everyone's expecting great GDP. If August data comes in poorly, well, then you're kind of back to the drawing board. And that could create a lot of market downside. But I do think the CPI report on Wednesday, probably going to be good. The expectations for CPI are really high. So your expectations for CPI on Wednesday is a month over month inflation reading of 0.6%. That is over 6% annualized. I doubt we come in that high. So I think either way you put it, you're going to beat the estimates. You're going to beat the expectations. Markets are going to rejoice on Wednesday. It's probably going to be a pretty good day for the markets. If it's not, if inflation comes in higher than these already stupid high estimates, then you have a much bigger problem in the markets. But I think that is probably like a 5% or less probability that that happens. Probably a 95% chance markets actually rally after Wednesday. Now, again, retail sales Thursday at 8.30 in the morning, you're expecting 0.7, well, now retail sales on Thursday, you're expecting 0.2% month over month. Last month's reading was 0.7%, so you're expecting quite the slowdown in retail sales. If this number is negative, I believe this could lead into a black swan event for the markets. If retail sales were to come in negative 1%, 2%, somewhere around there, which I, I do think there is a probably 25% give or take chance that that could happen, that could lead into a black swan event because the expectations are so high for GDP. And then if you get really bad numbers that feed into GDP, like retail sales feeds into GDP directly, that could be really bad. And I think that's the biggest danger for the markets this week. If we can get through Wednesday and Thursday, I don't see Friday being a, a, a day for the markets where the markets are displeased because all you have is Michigan consumer sentiment. And that's probably not going to cause the biggest move for the markets. It does cause a move, but unless inflation expectations increase, you typically don't see a huge negative reaction from the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey. Now, why is this important? And why have we talked about this in now multiple videos in regards to Tesla stock? Well, I think it's more important now to understand this than it even was in days prior because Tesla just rallied 10% and short sellers are in a really bad position if this week is bullish. The dollar amount that's currently sold short in Tesla stock is 19.89 billion. This number moves around a lot, but the short interest remains the same for the most part, around three to three and a half percent short or three to three and a quarter percent short. It seems like there's a lot of people or maybe just a couple big funds that are always short in Tesla. Maybe it's Bill Gates and a couple of his buddies. Who knows? But the short interest usually stays the same. Now, the dollar amount goes up and down. So after today's move, you're probably about 21 billion dollars worth of short positions currently on tesla it's not about the sh the percentage of short interest that actually causes short squeezes or big moves in uh, volatile stocks in big market cap stocks like a tesla it's actually the dollar amount that's short because if you're only three percent short interest or the flow is only three percent short but that three percent short is on a company that's worth almost $800 billion, you you are losing billions of dollars every day. That stock is up 2% or more, 3% or more. So you can get some very big losses in a short amount of time, and that is actually what leads short sellers to cover on short positions. It's not about the short interest of free float. It's about how many dollars are short in Tesla, and based on a rally, how much money are short sellers losing? And if Tesla continues higher from here, well, you're going to be adding billions and billions of dollars to losses just within the course of a couple of days or a week or two.
that's where you can get a short squeeze. Now, just besides that, the actual numbers of the dollars that are so sold short in Tesla, you also have some pretty big catalysts on the near-term horizon. Again, one of the reasons why Tesla stock did so well today is because there's rumors that Tesla is about to raise the price of the Model Y in China by as high as $1,400 and actually get rid of the lowest price model of the Model Y. This will show the markets a couple things. It will show the markets Tesla's pricing power and that margins are probably going to improve. AKA there's good demand and margins are going to get better. That is very good for Tesla stock. And I think partially that got priced into the markets today, but that's still just a rumor. If Tesla really does raise the price of the Model Y, that's extremely bullish, and I would expect another very strong day for Tesla stock when that does happen. We're expecting this could be in the month of October. You're in September today, so it could still be a little bit of time, okay? You also have the Cybertruck delivery event coming at any time now. Any day we could get that news. And that is another catalyst you don't want to be short heading into. You don't want to have bearish bets on Tesla for the this, this Cybertruck delivery event. It's not, it's not going to be a negative thing. Okay. Now, I think it's also worth noting that we just revisited a level that we have not visited since before Tesla's last earnings. And this has been really a remarkable level, really trend line that I've had drawn on the chart um, for a very long time since the, you know, I, I guess April of 2022. I've had this drawn on this chart literally in every single video. Um, and it's a very distinct level in which Tesla stock tends to really get rejected at. Now, today you closed above this level. And this could be important. This is a long-term downtrending level. If you can get through this week without bad events in the markets, Tesla stock could break above this. And last time Tesla did this was right before earnings. And then Tesla proceeded to rally the next multiple days following this break. And again, I want to point out, this was before earnings. So there was always that doubt that maybe Tesla was going to have bad earnings. You're breaking this trend line without earnings around the corner. If you break this trend line this week and close above it, you could see a very big rally here. This is, again, not the time you want to be short in Tesla, especially if you break a multi-year downtrending resistance line. This would be the ultimate bad news if, if you were short in Tesla. And really, what you've seen today was not good if you're short. Something else that gives me probably the highest degree of confidence in this rally with Tesla, obviously, keep in mind, I could be wrong. I'm not a financial advisor, so come to your own conclusions. Don't invest anything. You can't afford to lose all of that. You guys should already know the whole spiel, but it's the MACD. So the MACD... When you are negative, well, it tends to be negative when Tesla's going through severe sell-offs. And we've gotten multiple times where the MACD has been negative, and that was back here in December of 2021, through this period of really January 2022, through uh, March of 2022, back here in May of 2022, the period of October 2022, through January of 2023, you're all negative. But when the MACD does break from negative and goes positive, you tend to see a much larger rally in the price of Tesla stock. I would be very hard pressed to sit here and say this is the peak of this latest rally with Tesla. Considering margins improving in this current quarter and especially in next quarter, the energy business doing phenomenal things that wall street even morgan stanley is not expecting to have an impact to tesla share price which i personally think it will the cyber truck del delivery event right around the corner the refresh model 3 hopefully coming to america by the end of this year with a higher price tag than the previous model 3 all of these things are not things i would want to bet against and unless the economic data really does say, hey, we're going into recession, if retail sales are bad on Thursday, throw this whole video out the window. The markets, they're not going to care about Morgan Stanley's price target increase. There's going to be massive fear on Wall Street. But unless that happens, which 
I do think there's a maybe 25% chance that we get really bad retail sales numbers. Well, the stock's probably going to go higher. So I would say there's about a 75% chance, personally, Tesla stock can break the 300s within the next couple of weeks here and likely soar much higher than that. There's a 25% chance the next two days could be really bad for the markets really bad and could send tesla stock back to the 240s as quick as it just went to the 270s that's a possibility you have to be open for that but the risk reward is definitely skewed for a continued rally in tesla stock so i am not a financial advisor take this information as you will let me know what you think about tesla stock down below in the comment section i think the best thing to always just do with tesla the best rule of thumb it's just buy the stock when you can. Don't try to time it. Just buy the stock whenever you have extra money to do so. Thank you for watching. If you like videos like this, longer, in-depth, breaking down all the nitty-gritty, everything you need to know as a Tesla investor, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you guys want to come join the trading community as well, link down below in the description of this video. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.